Hey guys, welcome back to Cozy Woman Podcast. My name is Shan. I am the mama of the girls. Today's episode is a bonus. Good morning, parents. This is an impromptu episode, like a bonus. Um, Last night, I was in an interesting live on TikTok. It was a very heated live, but for a good reason. So I know posting on social media is so new um, for the past two years, especially how you can grow so fast on TikTok. But at what cost do you post your child and in what clothing do you put your child in when you post them? Does that matter? Is there a difference between posting a child in childlike clothing versus posting a child in fashion forward adult looking clothes on social media? And who are you posting your child for? And are you attracting good attention and gambling on the bad attention or do you not care? And is that child old enough to understand the exposure you're giving them as toddlers, as babies, as kids under 13, kids under 18? Did that child say they wanted to be in modeling or being branded all over the internet? And what will parents who do this pay for later when that child has an opinion, when that child doesn't want to be seen, doesn't want to be known, doesn't want to have millions of fans, and they just want to be a kid. What do you do then as a parent? And that was a whole live. So there was a picture of a toddler um, where the mom has a whole Instagram page for the toddler dressing up in adult looking clothes but in baby size, in toddler size. And she thinks it's cute. And of course, the young people of today think it's cute. But there's a parental mind that you have to have when you have children. And what's cute is not always go-to for myself as a parent. I do not think putting on adult-looking clothing on a toddler or a baby is cute. I wouldn't go into a store and say, where's this section of kids clothes that has the fake looking bras that women wear? I want to buy one for my girls. You know what I'm saying? I, I would never go into a store and say, where are the baby thongs at? Where are the baby tube tops at? Where are the baby halters at? Um, even, and I, and I understand this where some parents don't even buy their kids two piece bathing suits and that's your personal opinion. Now I feel like if you're at a beach, your baby is probably in like water swimming pull-ups, right? Or diapers. If you're, um, you have a toddler between two and four years old, they could be in a two piece, but it's a time and a place. We're at the beach, we're at the pool, you know what I'm saying? But I would never put a two-piece on my baby and go to Walmart and go to Target and go to a PTA meeting. You know, I would never say, oh, I'm going to be shopping in the mall today. Let me put my child in a two-piece. Let me have my child with her whole back out because I think the dress is cute. It looks like my dress. It's mommy and daughter dress day. Some things that I wear, I don't want my kids to wear. You know what I'm saying? Some things that I do, I don't want my kids to do. There's adult things that you do as a parent and there's children things. I still want my kids to focus on being kids, playing in the backyard, being on the trampoline, playing with balls playing soccer, playing in dirt, finding worms, looking at the flowers. Like, I don't want my child to be worried about why they don't have a cell phone. I don't want my child to be worried about why they can't get extra holes in their ears and get their ears pierced. I don't want my child to be worried about will they be able to get their belly button pierced. I, I, there's, there's a boundary and a limit. And I think a lot of parents today 
the, especially the younger ones. And when I say younger, I'm speaking like parents under 28 years old. You're still a young parent. They don't understand the boundaries. They think, well, you parent your kid and I'm a parent mine. Well, the thing is when we send them on the school bus, when they, when we send them to daycare, when we send them to after school care, when we send them to school, they're all mingling together. So what you teach your child has an effect on my child. What I teach my child has an effect on your child in some way or another. It's going to be in their mind. It's going to be on their conscience. It's going to be questions being brought home. So just because I wear makeup, I'm not putting makeup on my kids. Lip balm is cool. Chapstick is cool. Lip gloss with color? No. Eyeshadow? No. Getting fake nails put on little girls? No. Because was, what is that imitating? This imitating a grown woman. My children are not grown women. My children don't have jobs. Children heels for dress up? That's cool from the Barbie play set that you get in the toy section that you wear in the house. But no, you cannot wear clank, 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 clank heels when we go to the grocery store. No, you cannot wear that when we go to the mall. No, you cannot wear that to the family barbecue. It's just not appropriate. Mini, mini skirts for a toddler, not appropriate. When my child that's six puts on a mini skirt, she has spandex shorts under it. When she has a jumper skirt, there's spandex shorts under it. When my children wear uniforms and they have dresses or skirts, there's shorts under it. There's a way that we prevent things, anything. And I think being a parent is, a, is about being preventative. And for me, having a, a career in fashion design and a background from college in fashion design, I would be more likely to be involved in my children dressing a certain way or looking a certain way. But I really like the fact that my children could put on a t-shirt, some shorts, and go outside. A dress with uh, shorts under it and go outside. I don't want to see my girls in nails. I don't want to see my girls in makeup. I don't want my girls stressing about when they're going to get their hair braided at the hairdresser or when they're going to get their hair straightened or um, how, how can they have their hair like that model and how can they add in more hair in their hair because they like, it's okay for our kids to like something that adults do, but they do not have to do it. So I think a lot of the clothing today is adultifying children. There's no need for children to have skinny jeans. There's no need for uh, little boys to have baggy jeans to where their underwear is showing. There's no need um, for all of the adult clothes to have a child version. Children deserve to be in sweatpants, jeans that can get dirty, shoes that don't cost $90, or $200 that you're worried about getting messed up, or you're going to whoop your child because they got dirt on their shoes. They're children. They deserve to be children. So I'm not surprised by all the comments that were in the lives talking about, you need to worry about that your kid. You shouldn't have anything to say about their kid if they want to dress their kid in a tube top. And some jeans with their underwear sticking out, then they could do that. It's cute. If they want to put their child in glasses and have their hair done in a very adult way with a hair piece in and, and gel and, and, and their eyebrows done, then they could do that. And I agree. But I'm still going to have a conversation with my child and say, no, you cannot wear that. No, I'm not buying that. You can have the sandals, but the sandals will not have a heel on it. You can get your toes painted, but I'm not painting your hands. The only time I let my children get their hands painted, because I have two girls, is when it's their birthday. If it's one of their birthdays, I treat both of them. You could get your toes and your nails painted, but we're not adding on fake nails. I didn't go get my nails done until prom when I was 16.
My name is Shan. I am the mom of the girls. I am the host. I am the creator. I am the editor. I am the everything. You can check out more from me on shambipodden.com. Here we go. Back to the show. Back to the show. So I went through uh, all of grade school, no nails getting done. Middle school, no nails getting done. High school, up until the end. Then my nails got done at 16. The way parents have their elementary school kids in nail salons getting their nails done with acrylics and designs and all of this, and they can't even do their basic math skills. They're not reading on their grade level. The priorities are messed up. And so if my kid goes to school and they see that, yeah, they probably feel away or wonder why they don't get that treatment because that's not what children do. I don't, I'm, my goal is not to be my child's friend. My children see me leave the house decent because I want them to dress decent. I want them to dress in a way where it shows that I respect myself and I don't have to show all my body. I've never gone to the store with half of my butt cheeks hanging out or rips in my jeans where my butt cheek is showing with my kids on my side. Never. And I would never do it. As a mom, I am a guide and a leader. As a woman, I am supposed to be an example. My girls are six and nine, and only toes will get done over here. Hairdressers, I only take them to hairdressers to get a trim or on their birthday. Other than that, my kids are not being in the hairdresser every two weeks. I comb their hair every day. You do not want to see my hair closet in my house. It's ridiculous. Hundreds of dollars because all of our hair type is different. But I take care of their hair. I take care of their clothes. They don't leave the house with dirty clothes. They don't leave the house with holes in their clothes. They don't have shoes that don't fit. They have more bedding than me. I let them choose how I decorate their room. But there's certain limits that they don't get a choice. They don't get to pick out what they want to wear for school. You're wearing uniforms. You're wearing these sneakers. Do I get pushback? Yes. Most of the time I get pushback from my youngest child because over at her dad's house, they basically let her do what she want. Okay? But I don't do that over here because there's limitations to prevent your child from being exposed to the wrong people. So, yeah, children should be able to ride their bike and be comfortable. No heels over here. No tube tops. Boundaries, values, and standards. And that's why these young parents are lacking. That's why they're so combative when people have something to say on how they present their kids to the world. There is a thing such as the dark web where they're taking your kids' pictures and they're uploading them to sites. And just people who are have sick minds of what they want to do to kids have conversation, have discussion that exists. So be preventative, be a parent. A lot of people hate correction these days and it shows and it's loud, but I don't pay attention to that. There's a way, there's an appropriate way to dress your child and there's a way that's not appropriate that's adultifying. And I'm not saying that this is going to make someone who's creepy look at your child a certain way. A creep is going to look at your child regardless of what you have on. But it's just like um, the moral code of, let's say I have a truck. I have a driveway. I have keys. That's not anyone's truck but mine. Somebody's walking down the street. I prefer to not lock my door because people should know not to go in other people's things or take other people's things. So I'm going to leave everything I like in the truck and leave my car door open, hoping other people have a moral code. And somebody decides to walk up my driveway and go in my truck because the car door is open. I wasn't being preventative. I could have locked my car door, put on the alarm and be preventative and not have things that somebody would want to get viewed from the outside of my car, in my car. It's a choice. It's a choice as a parent to be preventative. It's a choice as a parent to be a guide. 
to do the right thing, to allow your child to be a child. I don't want my kids concerned with dressing like me right now. They could do that as women. I don't want my child to be concerned with makeup. I purposely pushed against my children being in modeling. Mind you, I have a fashion background. Why wouldn't I? They're beautiful girls. But children have no business being in modeling, putting on makeup, having things put in their hair, and walking up and down a runway like a grown woman. I don't, I don't think that's where a child should be. Now, commercial modeling where they're like on boxes of cereal or on educational things, taking those pictures, then that's fine. But to have an adult schedule and itinerary and me as a mom, I work for my kid? Absolutely not. And if my children were babies and they were doing that type of um, modeling for commercial and things like that and advertisement, maybe. But I would cut it once they became a, a toddler. There's a limit. And in those Places of entertainment and media is where a lot of sexual harassment happens because not everywhere a parent can go. There's so many people who have hands and access to your children in that arena of advertisement and marketing and fashion that you're not going to see everything. You're not going to know everything and creeps love it. And depending on how much money you make, you get away with a lot. You get slaps on the wrist. No matter how many women, boys, girls, or men come forward and say, this person did this to me for years. I told this person, I told that person, they did nothing. So as a parent, I am preventative. And as a parent, I am telling other parents, stop looking for a friend in your children. Be preventative. Just because your child can go outside and ride their bike without you doesn't mean you don't need to be outside with your child while they ride their bike. You know, when I, when I was little, my mom allowed me and my brother to um, be outside without her from 9 o'clock in the morning to 6 p.m. And she would hope if we had to pee, we came to her house. Sometimes if we thought we had friends, we would go to their house. What if those friends that we thought were our friends were not our friends and we went to their house and we never came out and there was no phone number shared? I would never raise my children how my mother raised me. And I'm not saying that she was a bad parent, but how that went on and was allowed was not preventative. There were so many loopholes in where I'm walking around the neighborhood by myself as a seven-year-old, as an eight-year-old, as a nine-year-old, as a 10-year-old. I'm in, the, I'm in the basement of buildings with kids running through buildings, playing manhunt when I should have been running through buildings. Anybody could open their door, grab me, put me in their apartment and lock the door. My mom's going to go to over 120 apartments and ask, have you seen my kid? There are loopholes in how your kids grow up. There are boundaries that your kids need. My kids don't go to the park without me. My kids don't go outside in the driveway without me. My kids don't go um, to parties without people I trust. And there's always there 100%. They don't leave them with other people I don't know. I know the numbers to where my children are. I know the address to where my children are. I check in. Because I'm a preventative parent. That is real parenting. There's a difference between people who want to dress up a kid because it looks cute and people who want to parent a child to be a better adult, a better human being, to have better options than they had. And that's the type of parent I am. And that's the type of parent people should strive to be. That's all I'm saying. So stop dressing your children as adults and be a parent. Thank you for checking out Cozy Womb Podcast. Peace. Bye. Bye.